Those several questions have been handed in. You can't probe into all of those questions. And we have chosen some of the more representative of those questions. Do questions need answers? Or there is only questions. Questions like are like a challenge. And what is important is how one meets the challenge, not what is the answer to the question, but what is one's response to a challenge, to a question, to a demand. I think that's far more important than to ask a question and wait for somebody to answer it, including myself. So let us first find out how to probe a question. Not, if I'm, one may remind oneself, not search for an answer. Investigate into the outcome of the answer, but rather the cause and one's response to the question. So, how does one approach a question? Suppose I have a question. That is, I question the whole of modern civilization, not one particular part of that civilization, whether it's the Christian or the Hindu or the Muslim or the Buddhist, but I want to question the whole cultural development of man. I can study all the various historians, and it will take too long, and I haven't got the time, nor am I interested in finding out what others say about history. History is the story of man, which is the story of myself. So, how do I approach a question of that kind? I see a whole culture of India, for example, the Brahmanical culture, which has lasted to between five to three thousand years, completely disappear overnight. I don't know if you are aware of all that. It doesn't matter, just to inform. It has disappeared overnight. So what is culture? It's just a coating. However deep that coating may be, it may have different layers of coating, but it is still a coating, because deep down man is more or less the same as he has always been, violent and all the rest of it. So how do I approach, how, or how does one approach a question of this kind? The approach matters far more than the question, doesn't it? Please, we are talking over together. I'm not laying down any dogmatic statements or asking to accept what the speaker is saying. But how do how does one approach any problem? Any question? What 
What is my motive in my approach to the question? What is the problem and the cause of that problem? My, and one's approach to the investigation, to the probing of that cause and the problem. Do I come to it with a motive, with a desire to get rid of it, or go beyond it, suppress it, and so on? What's my inward reaction to it? If I'm not very clear on that, and I'm only seeking an answer, somehow to resolve the problem, I'm not really concerned with the issue at all. I'm only concerned with the going beyond it somehow. And so the escape from the problem creates more problems. Right? So it matters a great deal one feels, if one may point out, how one approaches a problem, a question. Is the mind or the brain seeking an answer? Then we are not investigating the problem, the issue, the challenge, the question, but merely trying to find out a, an answer which is immediately satisfactory. So I think it matters very much, if one may again point out, how one comes to a problem, how close one gets to it. Approach it means to come near. How close, how near does one get to the problem? Or the problem is out there, and I am approaching it. You can see. Or the problem is me. Not somewhere in the periphery of me. The trap is me. So how do I go into all this? just superficially, casually, or with great hesitation, sensitivity, a sense not coming to any conclusion, probing to it deeper and deeper and deeper. Is the brain capable of doing this? Or we are so terribly conditioned that we say, for God's sake, let's get rid of the problem. You understand all this? We are, in, no, we are going to investigate, probe into the question, not find an answer to it. The answer is in the question, not away from the question. And who is to answer the question? Some leader, some prophet, some politician, some guru, some priest, which means we are always seeking an answer from somebody else. And Please don't put the speaker in that position, because he is not going to answer if we are going together investigate the question, which is much more intelligent. Say, if I, if one answers, you say, well, that's not good enough, or that's all, right, that's satisfactory, or you begin to discuss about the answer, but. 
if we begin to look, probe, you know, play with it, then it reveals tremendous lot. Right? There are several questions here. 